what the heck is happening in the stock market and could that happen in the real estate market? That's a great question. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you what happened, what that means for real estate. And most importantly, there is a nugget of wisdom you can take away from this. So I was watching the news with my wife <laughs> talking about GameStop and what happened in the stock market. And she asked, what the heck is a short sale and what is a hedge fund? And I thought, Oh, wow, that's a great question. And something probably not, not a lot of people understand. So I thought I would try and explain it to you and how it correlates to the stock market. So when you hear fancy terms like short sale, hedge fund, derivative, call option, you can be pretty sure that it's some Wall Street baller who's making up a new thing to try and make more money. Now these aren't new, but they definitely made them up to try and make more money. So what is a short sale? So a long sale, <laughs> when you just normally buy a stock, is you're betting that the stock is gonna go up, right? So you buy it for 20 bucks and you hope it goes to say 40 bucks and then you made 20 bucks, right? And maybe more importantly in this case, something to remember, if the stock goes to zero, the absolute lowest it can go, you would lose 20 bucks, right? So a short sale is where you actually sell a stock to somebody that you don't own. And basically you're betting that the stock is gonna go down. Now to sell it to someone, you borrow it from someone else and you pay them uh, a fee for that service. <laughs> and then you sell it to someone else, hoping that it's gonna go down. So let's say you sold it to someone for 20 bucks and that stock went down to 10 bucks, then you would ha and then you and then you bought it in the open market give the stock back to the person who lent it to you, then you would have made 10 bucks minus any, uh, any fees that that person would have charged you. The downside on a short sale is unlimited and the upside is limited. So what I mean by that is, so the, let's say the upside, the value of stock can only go down to $0. So if you sell a stock at $20 and it goes to zero, you, most you can make is 20 bucks, right? Now it has unlimited risk, unlimited loss potential because stock has no real theoretical ceiling, right? It could go to like a thousand bucks and now you're eight out $980, right? Cause you have to buy that back in the open market and give it back to the person you borrowed it from. So why would you want to short sell a stock? Well, the theory goes, if you're investing in the stock market, you're doing research, you're looking for great companies that are going to return lots of money. Uh, over the future, but in doing that research, you're going to find some that you think are not going to do so well. So, hey, wouldn't it be great if you could bet against those companies that when the price goes down, then you make money. So goes the theory. Okay, so what is a hedge fund? So a hedge fund is like a normal fund, if you will. They buy stocks, but they're also allowed to short sell stocks and do some other things that traditional funds are not allowed to do. So that, you know, gives investors typically more options, uh, but also inherently potentially more risk. And therefore most folks aren't allowed to invest in hedge funds. Uh, you have to be a special type read <laughs> a wealthy investor to invest in hedge funds. What happened in the stock market? So, <laughs> like I said, there were some hedge funds and there's a stock called GameStop that these hedge funds bet against, right? So they short sold hundreds of millions of dollars of this stock, uh, thinking, probably rightly so, that the value was gonna go down, right? So they were betting against the stock. So that means they had bored a whole bunch and then they had sold these stock to somebody else, so they short sold. Then there was a bunch of investors that got together. Now, normally individual investors can't really affect the market. Uh, but you know, my understanding what happened is a bunch of investors, literally thousands, tens of thousands got together and decided to bet against these hedge funds and make the stock price of uh, GameStop move up basically. Right? So, you know, they were, they would were involved in strategic buying. They would buy and probably go around and around and the stock price started to creep up. 
So these rising prices meant a problem for the hedge funds. Now remember, they bet hundreds of million dollars against this stock, GameStop, and the price started to rise. Now what happens is, like I mentioned, there is unlimited potential for loss when you short sell. So people start to get nervous. Creditors start to get nervous. The people you borrowed the stock from start to get nervous that you're not gonna be able to pay it back. As the price starts to climb, these hedge funds have to buy back the stock so they can give it to the people that they borrowed from, right? Now they're going into a market that's already hot, lots of people are buying, and they're buying more. So that becomes a vicious cycle, right? They're you know, buying stock that they have to go and buy, which is creating more pressure, making the stock price go up, then they have to buy even more because there's even more pressure now for them to close out these positions, right? Close out these positions, that's what it's called when you, uh, you know, buy the stock and give it to the person you borrowed from. You're closing out your position. So this is what they call a short squeeze. You might have heard them say that, that the hedge funds got short squeezed. And it's really a David versus Goliath thing in this case because normally, you know, retail investors, investors like you and I, can't really affect the price of things. But in this case, these investors got together to drive up the price of the stock and it's hurting the hedge funds, uh, you know, the big companies on Wall Street and the really wealthy investors. And you know what's interesting about this situation, uh, other than say the David and Goliath aspect, is often prices don't spiral up. Now they do spiral down at times and markets usually halt trading. Uh, and that's, you know, let everyone calm down and you know, what happens when prices go down too quickly is a lot of um, uh, people that hedged derivatives or that kind of thing have to sell, which causes them to go even further. So they halt trading so all that stuff can kind of calm down and stop. In this case, uh, it seems like they've halted uh, buying, uh, which may or may not be legal. It's certainly uh, putting a lot of people up in arms because, you know, they feel like this is, you know, the real, uh, uh, you know, David versus Goliath. And it's Goliath that's hurting. And it's Goliath that's turning the taps off. So, okay, I hope all that made sense. The question now is, could that happen in a real estate market? So you'll be relieved to know <laughs> that this kind of situation can't happen in the stock market. So the first thing is you actually can't short sell a house, right? You can't sell somebody a house you don't actually own. Well, you can, but you'll go to jail. <laughs> you know, and the second thing is stock market, the stock is like, it's just a piece of paper, not even anymore. It's just an electronic thing that's traded back and forth between investors. It's not a real thing. A house is a tangible, real asset that people live in or you invest in for basically other people to live in, right? So it has an end use. It's what they would call real wealth, right? So a stock that's not a real thing and just traded between two people and it's really a zero sum game, right? The one person makes money, one person loses money. It can get into that vicious cycle rather quickly and spiral out of control. Luckily that doesn't happen in the real estate market. You know, because as prices, if prices get too high, people can't afford it and they just stop buying. Or if prices, you know, start to spiral down, people will just stop selling and limiting the supply. So the supply demand will really affect the, the market. Okay, so what's the interesting benefit for you out of all this? What, what's maybe an interesting takeaway? So, <laughs> you probably don't know this, but because we're talking about shorting, there is something that real estate helps you short in a very positive way. You can actually short currency by buying a house and getting a long-term mortgage. So what do I mean by that? Well, right now there's certainly gonna be a lot of pressure for currencies to devalue or inflation real or, you know, actual. <laughs> there's a difference. <laughs> I'll explain that in another video, but there is a potential for currencies to go through some major value erosion. And what happens when you buy real estate and have a big mortgage is the value of your real estate goes up as currencies devalue and the value, the real value of your mortgage actually drops as currencies devalue. So you actually in real terms have to pay back less. So it's a big hedge against inflation. And you know, I'd love to claim credit for thinking of this 
but I actually learned that from Warren Buffett, so <laughs> he seems to know what he's talking about. So I hope you found that hugely helpful, somewhat interesting. If you want to talk about investing, you know, clearly I'm more than just a real estate investor. I've been investing in the equity market since I was about 13, so for a little while now. <laughs> I've done it all. I actually believe more strongly in real estate uh, and that probably comes through here. But if you want to talk about it, if you want to learn more, please shoot me an email, paul at thinkto.ca. And please like this video and smash that subscribe button and leave a comment below so I'll know to make more of this type of video. Talk soon.